Yo Joes, welcome to another custom video and this is one of the coolest customs that I feel I've ever done and I'm very excited to share this one with you. And it's one of those customs that if I can do it, you can do it. I've said before, if I can do the ultimate USS flag underneath custom, anyone can. I am not a crafty type of person. I'm a bad combination of not very good craft skills with my hands and picky kind of a perfectionist so when i don't do something very well it really irks me but uh i've i've stumbled on this i had this idea for quite a while and i absolutely love how it has turned out so with the news of the uh, gi joe retro line coming out recently i know there's a lot of joe fans who were left wanting something else um it's nice to see the anniversary line back i like the anniversary line I'm glad they brought it back. I, I hope we can get some of the anniversary figures that we didn't get the first time around, like low light on a vintage style card or airtight, wetsuit, leatherneck. Uh, but what we're getting is basically anniversary style figures. And most Joe fans wanted this reissue O-ring figures. This is not an original uh, G.I. Joe mint on card figure. I picked this up on eBay not too long ago and uh, I did an in-depth review on it for the Patreon tribe because the Patreon tribe rocks. So showing off every little nook and cranny of this thing. But it's a re reproduction card with an original breaker glued onto it. So he's on there permanent. And one of the things that bugs me about mint on card G.I. Joe figures is they're stuck on there. So I got lucky with this one. He looks pretty good in there. But sometimes you get like an arm is bent weird or a shoulder is jutting out too much or they're crooked, something that can be a little bit irritating. And I just don't like not being able to take him out of there. I was really hoping for O-ring reissues with uh, clamshell packaging that you could take the figure out, play around with him, futz around with him, put him back in. So I don't know who made this card. It's actually really, really high quality. Feels a lot like the original. It's nice and thick. Um, thicker than a lot of the uh, Collector's Club G.I. Joe figures. Not sure who did it, um, but I got it from the Netherlands, uh, and, and, it's, and it's really, really nice. I ordered a couple of reproduction card backs and bubbles from, uh, from a company called Beggar's Canyon, and uh, there are a couple of different places to get it, so you can do your own research uh, and decide which one you want to go with, but I just went with Beggar's Canyon, and they have reproduction cards and you can get the bubbles too if you want so I'm not sure if this breaker is a is a beggars Canyon or not they seem pretty similar although in person in hand this one looks to me a little bit better there's just like a feel a look to the printing the quality is a little bit bigger and uh, so I don't know if this was a beggars Canyon card and maybe it was a different run or, or what but um, for the for the review today or the tutorial I want to tell you this awesome new technique of doing it yourself so if you don't like the uh, retro G.I. Joe line if you were hoping for vintage figures on a vintage card now you can do it yourself as an old inspirational song once told us uh, you hold the future in your hands and uh, and another uh, good expression is if you want something done right do it yourself and I think that's very important not just in the collecting community but in life in general uh, you can't just be waiting for someone else to make you happy so for me when I when I look at the Hasbro releases and, and all the other companies I think of it all as a bonus if something is good awesome it's good if it's disappointing oh well big deal I'll figure something out on my own and that's what I figured out here and that's what we're doing today so uh, to do this custom you'll need a reproduction card and bubble a figure and with any accessories that you want it doesn't have to actually be the original accessories I've got a Duke here that I have done this customization on and a lot of uh, Joe fans will notice he's got the wrong gun in here or is it the wrong gun? It's the right gun to me. 
and probably to quite a few Joe fans out there. Uh, Duke, the original card art, he was pictured with this snow job laser rifle and um, the stalker gun they gave him, the light green stalker gun, never seemed quite right. I always thought he should have the gun that was in his card art and now he does. It's from a extra pack, reproduction pack. Back in the day, they did a gray version and that's on there. And uh, he is magnetized onto here. So I'm going to show you right now how to do this and how effective it is, easy it is, and also kind of fun too. Way more fun than uh, dealing with glue or epoxy. So for this custom magnetized recarding, we're going to do 85 snake eyes, one of my favorite figures of all time. Often when I'm asked who's my favorite, this one just pops into my mind. And this is my original snake eyes from 1985. This is the one I grew up with. And uh, it's going to be really awesome to stick him on an original card with his original timber too. It's really cool to be able to take some of the actual figures from your childhood, put them in a, a nice little display case or a little clamshell. But I can't think of a more fitting display piece, display stand, display area than to put my original Snake Eyes on this beautiful original Hector Garrido card art. And what you're going to need for this is the right magnets for the job. So I tried a couple of different magnets and what I settled on, what ended up being the perfect magnet for this. And this isn't something I think you could have done uh, some years ago. Um, these little magnets are super, super powerful. And they are called uh, N50. N50 small fridge magnets. They are five millimeter by one millimeter. They are minuscule. Look how thin and tiny but powerful. I don't know if it'll stick to my ring. It doesn't. It's not the right type of metal. But the important thing is they stick to themselves. Like this is really, really powerful. And I was considering using uh, long bar magnets for the longest time before I actually did this custom. I was going to get uh, like long, just long kind of rectangle shaped magnets. I figured that's what would be required in order to hold the weight of the bubble and the figure and his accessory on here. But these little guys work perfect and we're gonna put one together right now. So I'm gonna remove the accessories, hair standing on the back of the neck, don't break the thumb. Take the sword out of the backpack and get the figure ready for how you want him to look. The great thing about this is you can change it up if you want. You can have them looking to the side, looking down. This might seem insignificant to most people, but I think it's important. I think it's cool to be able to choose how you want your figure to look in there instead of going to a store and buying an, o like if they had done O-ring reissues and just having like a dude in the package, kind of like that and not looking all that cool love the ability to futz with them so we got our snake eyes figure already here timber is not posable that's not a big deal and if you choose to purchase these from beggars canyon like i did they are nice enough to label these they put a little sticker on here telling you uh, what goes with what so if you order uh, a few of them that could get very confusing not knowing which bubble goes with which card so luckily they label them and when you pull these off it might leave a little bit of sticky residue and what I always do with that you can see a little bit of sticky residue right under my finger here I just use the actual sticker that I peeled off and I just do that over and over again and the sticky sticker actually pulls off the sticky residue nice and clean so now what you're going to do is turn this bubble over like this and stick the figure in, get an idea of how he's going to look. It's a tight squeeze for these guys. I remember them being having a lot more room in here, but they're actually really compact in here. So you get your figure in here, decide how you want them to go. I noticed on some of them, you do have to kind of put one arm forward, one arm back. 
and uh, that looks fine to me. Maybe even twist this a little bit if you want to show off that awesome wrist arrow. And that's how he's going to be in the bubble. Oh, and sorry to jump around, but you can get these for cheap. I just want to mention that these are very, very affordable. I got a hundred of them for like $4 US shipped from China. That's an amazing price. So that's, that's what's awesome about this thing. The figures might run you a little bit, especially Snake Eyes. The cards with bubbles might run you a little bit. They're not exactly cheap. Um, way more affordable than buying a mint on card original. But it's the magnets that are uh, really affordable. Now we got to figure out how to get everything in this bubble up here. So you can decide which way timber goes. Um, let's see. Be careful if you're doing one with timber because he is uh, quite fragile. The back leg on mine did break and you can see uh, teenager me glued that all together as best as I could. Um, how does this go? It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe, maybe like that'll work or on an angle. But again, because you're using magnets here, you get to have a little bit of trial and error. If you're using glue, it just sucks. I mean, you got one shot to plug it on and that's it. Cross your fingers, hope for the best. But uh, that that might be as good as we get. Uh, the backpack, it's starting to get really tight in there. Um, drop an Uzi in there, drop a sword in there. Backpack, oh, it's a little bit like Lego or Jenga. It kind of fits in there quite nicely. So now that we have all of the, uh, the accessories in there, this one is a particularly tricky one to fit everything in there, but we'll just stick everything on like that and just kind of hold it against the card to see if it sits flat. I noticed on my low light, it doesn't sit flat because of how huge his backpack is. So I had to double up some of the magnets in order to uh, hold it better. And that's the great thing about this technique uh, a lot of the time, all it'll take is one magnet on the front, one magnet on the back. If it's not holding it enough, just pop another magnet on there. And these just, they want to connect and join each other. So uh, that'll just strengthen it. All right, so now that we've got him on there, we need to put a bunch of these magnets. And what I like to do, we don't want to drag the bubble and scuff it up but uh, just put a bunch of these individually on the ground here they are super powerful they they want to connect with each other or or repel that's another thing you need to watch um, the polarity they'll either uh, connect or repel so you want to line the corners up as best as you can and I guess you can start with a corner Pop a magnet on the top here, take another magnet, and just, uh, there you go. I mean, it, it just jumps and tries to connect with the other one, and then you can move it around to wherever you want to secure it, but before you turn this thing upright, you need to put a few more magnets to secure it, so we'll put another magnet in the bottom corner here, and I'm just guessing here, this is part of the fun guessing I got the right polarity. If not, they just kind of, they flip themselves if they're strong enough. So um, it's possible if you get these magnets, these N50s, um, they're not always the same strength. Like uh, I do have some N50s that are stronger than other N50s. Hopefully you get some really strong ones. Um, maybe they're can uh, mixing them up N50s and N I think it's 35s but they should just like jump to each other and hold on to there and it'll move around as you're adding these but the more you get on there and connected and secured the more this thing will just be sturdy so we've got a couple and we're gonna keep Oh, separating a few. It can be especially tricky if you've got some metal on your workbench. I was doing some of these on a table 
and uh, there was a metal rod going underneath them and the magnets were so powerful that they were jumping out and attaching to the metal rod underneath, underneath. But this is a little easier now that we've got it on there and secured. And feel free to create your own technique for this. Maybe it's easier for you to start with the bubble on here. And we take another one and see that was the wrong polarity, but they just flipped and connected themselves. Take another one here. So I like to go with the bottom corners and then the middle and then secure the top corners too. So we've got one over here and I'm going to take one underneath and see how that jumped. Just finds it if it's strong enough. I thought this was going to be a nightmare to do, but uh, luckily with powerful enough magnets, they just they figure things out on their own. And I'm going to put one more in the top corner and see if that'll be enough. So one here right under American, the real American hero. Another one on my finger and does a little jump and it is secured on there. This is, like I said, a lot of stuff. Timber is heavy, backpack, gun, sword. So um, he seems pretty secure. It doesn't feel like it's sliding around on me. I got lucky with low light. All I had to do, and I've got him over here just to show you. Uh, I don't know if it was warping on the bubble or this is just the, uh, the backpack is too big for there, but here you can see I've doubled up the magnets on the front and on the back. Very easy to just duplicate, like double the power of your magnets without doubling them up. The bubble was coming off. It wasn't holding it properly and I didn't have to do it everywhere. It was just on the very top right here. The rest of it is uh, single magnets and he is like I'm giving this a good shake here obviously I don't want to whack it and fling it around that's gonna make it fall off but um, you know hopefully seeing is believing here for you um, that bubble is not shifting anywhere even though you can shift it if you want see how I can move this around a little bit the, the magnets have a lot of give um, this bubble is coming off the edge right here past the white part. So I just give that a little bit of a nudge. And now it looks like an actual mint on card figure. And Snake Eyes, who we just did, uh, I got lucky. Um, I feel like maybe I should put one more here just in the corner. And that's up to you if you want oh, uh, to cover up some of the artwork. That's one of the drawbacks of this technique. A very small drawback and uh, I'll, I'll happily take it but uh, you don't want to be covering up any original Hector Garrido art but uh, for the sake of securing this thing so that it won't uh, slide off fall off I'm just gonna stick another magnet here and I have no idea where it is in the back here around here and just there you go it finds it love magnets nice and secure and I don't look at my stuff with a, a microscope or a monocle so the little dots right here don't bother me in the least in fact I think they kind of look cool because they're chrome and uh, a little bit of chrome goes a long way on everything so cool little rivets there and just like low light snake eyes and give them a good shake the bubble is not sliding that was one of the concerns I had about this technique, that the bubble would just slide all over the place, slide right off. Uh, if you want to punch out the hole here, you could put him on a peg. And I don't feel as though this will slide off over time. And there you go. A mint on card reproduction snake eyes figure for a fraction of the price of a mint on card original snake eyes or even... A reproduction one. These pop up on eBay. People have glued an original Snake Eyes figure onto these reproduction cards. And it's still expensive. But this, this is great because my original Snake Eyes is in here. And if I want to get them, 
I can pull them out of there, no problem. So uh, say you do this, you do this technique and, and you want to put the card into something to protect it. You don't want to just stick it um, on a wall. You don't want to, basically you don't want to punch the, the peg hole out. So these cards that I have from Beggar's Canyon, they do fit in star case. Uh, what is this called? Star, yeah, it's a star case. Uh, Protex star case, I think. Fits in perfectly. And I'll show you just how they fit in. And uh, you, would, you would think that the magnets might obstruct some of the ability to fit in some of these clear clamshell packages, but it goes right in. It's actually a tiny bit of give, which is what you want to see. You don't want to be damaging the edges of these as you're putting these cards in, even if they're reproduction cards. It's still artwork. You don't want to mess it up. So Protect Star cases fit perfect, and the extra width that the magnets create don't have any effect on sealing one of these cards in one of these clamshells. So now you've got not just a reproduction card, but this looks like uh, one of those high graded, super expensive uh, looking figures in a really nice professional case. And the other case that it will fit in, and I'm, I was surprised about this, it's one of these hard plastic like uh, really, really valuable figures go into these hard plastic cases. And I thought for sure it won't fit in here because the magnets will be too thick. But once again, well, this is a bit of a tight squeeze just because of the, uh, the bubble comes out so far with timber, but it's fitting. The magnets aren't getting caught as long as you go slow. Um, and that they've moved a bit on me up there but uh, just to show you I mean I, I can do a little bit more futzing just to make sure the magnets look right in there but uh, just to show you like this fits in there perfectly so the magnets are so thin it's still fine still fits in one of these cases perfectly fine the only case that this technique does not work on is on the actual official um, Hasbro clamshell cases that came with some of the San Diego Comic Con cases or uh, some of the Collectors Club cases and the ones I'm talking about they're very similar to this Protex Star case but they're thinner uh, they're not they don't come out as wide and they're the ones that have the G.I. Joe star on one side and the Cobra symbol on the other um, these Beggar's Canyon cards uh, would not fit in any of my official Hasbro G.I. Joe cases. Uh, these cards are too big. And I guess I could have made them fit if I squished them in there and, you know, bent the card a little bit, but I didn't want to do that. So I just want to give you a heads up in case you have some of those G.I. Joe cases not going to work uh, without a little bit of pushing and probably bending. But uh, that is the magnetization technique of making your own o-ring reissues or uh, reproduction action figures you can get some of your favorites these are a few of the ones that i had duplicates of and uh i liked having them displayed on a on a shelf but uh it, it's really the synergy between the card art and the figure for me so it's really, really, really awesome. I, if I could have two mint on card G.I. Joe figures for the longest time, I have felt like it would have been Duke and Snake Eyes, and now I have it. And what makes it even sweeter is that I have it at like a fraction of the price that the uh, genuine article would have cost, plus I can open it up and play around with it. I have the option of putting it back in Whereas if you get an actual original G.I. Joe mint on card figure or a re-glued, a glued on reproduction figure, that's it. There's nothing you can do with it. All you can do is hold it, look at it. It's still cool. Don't get me wrong. There's no little, I mean, there's, there's advantages. There's no little magnet circles in the corners. But if I show you these side by side, do the magnets really bother you that much? Maybe they do, but for me, the advantages are so much more with this magnetization technique. 
uh, than this like a glued on uh, reproduction figure. This is the only one I have, this breaker, and I don't really feel like ever getting another glued on reproduction figure now that I've been doing this. And with this technique, I'm looking forward to getting a couple more of these guys. I don't have to redo the whole collection, but you know, I'm looking forward to getting a snow job magnetized on a card or a blowtorch or some of my other favorites because this is super cool. Looks really awesome. It's uh, fun. The magnets are, are fun to work with when you get them to, to line up. And, uh, and it's uh, something you can do on a budget, too. Thank you, Patreon Tribe, for providing the channel Patreon Power. Want to give a warm welcome to our new Patreon Tribe members, Jack DeFranco, Stephanie Hazel, Joseph, John Eastman, Jason Brandenburg, Hubert Arts, hope I pronounced that right, Mike Corin, Lee Hawkins, Ravi Swamy, Wesley Cooper, Jay Inklin, and Brad. And thank you, Patreon Power Masters, Goji Tron, and Mark Lennon for the extra energon. Feel free to share, leave a thought in the comment spot, and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Yo, Joe!